Our reporter Wailing Tan speaks to one of the few females in the job and has this story. It's a cold winter day in Beijing, but minus 5 degrees has nothing on 29-year-old Wang Shuang, nor the fact that she's a female in a male-dominated industry. Wang Shuang has been a food delivery writer for 18 months now. I didn't tell my family what my job was when I first started, for fear they would worry about my safety. Over time, I began to gradually reveal it to them. I also remember when I first joined the company, my mentor thought I as a female wouldn't last beyond a day or two. But here I am, still holding on. Wang Shuang hails from the northeastern province of Heilongjiang. She delivers an average of 40 orders a day. She gets 10 yuan, or a dollar and a half, for every delivery made. She says the monthly income of about 1,100 US dollars is enough to get by in the big city. It's really not easy, not just for the female riders, but even for the male riders too. Some might think it's a simple job. All you have to do is pick up food, ride on the road, and deliver food. But only you yourself know how hard the work is. I had zero experience when I first started. I had a terrible sense of direction and couldn't even differentiate north, south, east, and west. Can you imagine that? My body used to ache so much when I woke up every morning. My palms swelled too from how hard the bike's steering wheel is. But I got used to all of it after a while, and things got better. We see riders like Wang Shuang everywhere in China. Day in, day out, they dash about from one spot to another, racing against time. Now, I myself am a beneficiary of China's food delivery system. The options available, service, and efficiency is truly like nowhere else. But I sometimes wonder, among other things, how do riders see the touch-and-go nature of this role? Does the lack of human connection and warmth bother them? And what transferable skills have they picked up along the way? I've learned to better deal with emergency situations and pressure. Imagine having multiple orders at hand but with only a few minutes left to deliver them. I don't think this role lacks communication either. In fact, I think it's one of the main skills. Nicely to restaurants to get orders out as soon as possible. How to explain to customers if I'm running late or if the food is spilled. This is actually one of the advantages of being a female writer over a male one. On the flip side, our physical strength lacks behind that of men's, so we struggle when it comes to bulky orders. From bad traffic and long waits in and out the elevator, to dealing with impatient and at times rude customers, it's a job not for the faint-hearted. Still, Wang Shuang feels it's all worth it. I feel quite proud of what I do. Yes, I work hard, but I get rewarded for it, such that my family and I can have a better life. I feel it's fair, plus of time and freedom. I get a rest when I want to. As a female writer picking up food, I've received offers to work in restaurants. But after thinking about it, I thought my present job was better. In restaurant businesses, you get paid power and you have to be stuck in the same place the entire shift. So, what's next for her? Wang Shuang has thought about becoming a delivery writer back in her hometown and maybe eventually moving on to managing a team there. But if she stays on in Beijing, she'll continue doing what she does now. You see the small flags I've pinned on the map there? Those are the places I've been to before. There aren't many, actually. With the money I earn here, I hope to drive and travel around the country with my best friend. If I come across a place with nice countryside and scenery, I'll pick up my parents to join us. They aren't young anymore. And every time she takes to the road, it's a dream that keeps Wang Shuang going. Even with all the pressures and challenges the line of work brings. Wei Lin Tang, CGTN, Beijing.